Hi, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Lark with another story of the week. And this story is called Going Down Home with Daddy. And it is a Caldecott Award winner. Um, and I thought it was a good choice because even though the story takes place at a different time of year, it's about getting together with family. And I know um, this Thanksgiving is going to be very different for many people as a traditional family gathering may be a little more virtual than uh, you typically have had in the past. But I thought this was a nice story about a family reunion and a family get together that I thought you would enjoy. So here we go, Going Down Home with Daddy. Going Down Home with Daddy is written by Kelly Starling Lyons and it's illustrated by Daniel M Mint Minter. On reunion morning, we rise before the sun. Daddy hums as he packs our car with suitcases and a cooler full of snacks. He says there's nothing like going down home. We leave when the sky is still dark with sleep. Sis closes her eyes, but mine stay wide open. I watch as we drive from city streets to flowing highways under a sweep of sparkling stars. Little Alan, Mama says after a while, you better catch some Z's while you can. I try to rest, but can't stop smiling. Soon I'll get to see my great grandma, granny, and hang out with my cousins. But when I look at my hands, empty as the road in front of us, my grin fades. The anniversary celebration, I bet everyone will have something to share except me. I doze off in a cloud of worry and wake to sunbeams tickling my face. I squint and see a familiar John Deere tractor store and a gray silo standing at attention. We're almost there. Sh Sis and I sit up straight as pines when we see Granny's wood-framed house. She's right where we left her after last year's reunion, scattering corn for her chickens like tiny bits of gold. There she is, Sis shouts. Granny spreads her arms wide and wraps us both inside. My, my, she says, and showers our cheeks with peppermint kisses. I miss you too. All afternoon, a parade of family comes home. Grandma Loretta and Grandpa James, aunts and uncles, and more cousins than I can count. Got a head just like your daddy, Uncle Jay teases me. Daddy's eyes twinkle. Now I know you're not talking about heads. Can't take them anywhere, Grandma Loretta says, laughing. While the grown-ups catch up, we cousins run to the fence to visit Granny's cows and goats. You doing something for the celebration, Isaiah asks Sis. Singing Granny's favorite song, his eye is on the sparrow, she says. How about you? Reading Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. I made a scrapbook in Granny's favorite color, blue, Devin says. You got something, little Alan? I kick a stone and my eyes start to burn. Ready for a tractor ride? Sis asks, saving me from having to answer. I swallow hard and climb into the trailer with Sis and Mama. I lean against the hay as Daddy drives us past the smokehouse and fishing pond and rumbles by a field dotted with puffs of white. Cotton has been on this land a long time, just like us, Daddy says. 
Pa would drive your Uncle Jay and me on a tractor just like this one. Look to your left, Pa would say. Look to your right. The land just seemed to go on forever. Everything you see, Pa told us, is ours. I think about what Daddy said and sit up tall. Pa is gone, but this is our time to come together and remember. Daddy's words make me want to share more than ever. When the ride stops, I ask him what to do. Think with your heart, little Alan, Daddy says. That's what Pa always told me. Just then we hear Granny. Come on and get this food while it's hot, she calls from the porch. We dash inside. The dining room overflows with love-made dishes, smoked turkey, collards, mac and cheese, okra and tomatoes, and biscuits oozing with maha jelly, just like the way Daddy likes. Hand in hand, we create a ring inside the house Pa built for Granny. Heart to heart, we share what we're thankful for. Nothing is more important than family, Granny says, tearing up as she looks at every face. Amens all around. On Sunday, I feel sick. Not a fever and sneezing sick, but a wish I had more time sick. The celebration starts at dusk. Get a move on, little Alan, Grandma Loretta says. You know Granny doesn't play. Growing up, we never missed a service. At church, Daddy points to the spot where he and Uncle Jay performed a duet on trombone and trumpet. My hands were shaking so much I could barely play, Daddy says, but then I saw Granny smiling. My jitters went away. I wonder if looking at Granny will help me, but when our eyes meet, all I can think about is being the only kid with nothing to say. After service, we head back to Granny's and change into our reunion t-shirts. Generations of our family smile from every wall. Mama, Sis, and I peer at black and white pictures of Pa and Granny. Their eyes, brave and bold, remind me of Daddy's. You have their eyes too, Mama says. That's when it comes to me. I think about everything I see when I'm here. I think about the tractor ride and daddy's stories. I think about walking in Pa's and Granny's footsteps in those of our people and native people long before. I think and collect treasures from our land. I lift my head to the sun. Just before satin night falls, we sit outside on the porch steps and metal lawn chairs. It's celebration time. Our people were stolen from Africa and shipped to this continent in chains, Daddy says, but no one could lock away their dreams. They dreamed on this land during slavery. They dreamed on this land as they made a way out of no way and fought Jim Crow. 75 years ago, a farmer and a teacher bought this land. Daddy gazes at Granny. And look at us now. One after another, cousins offer their tributes. Sis's song makes Granny's eyes shine. Isaiah's poem gets everyone nodding. Then I step forward. I feel like a spotlight is blazing just on me. I look down and say nothing. It's okay, little Alan, sis whispers. I lift my head and see gleaming smiles. I try again. Cotton for the quilts Granny made to keep her children warm, I say, holding a white cloud in my fingers. 
a pecan for the trees Pa planted and all of the kids loved to climb. I pinch dirt and let it rain to the ground and earth for land that's ours as far as we can see. Fireflies wink and whirl in a carnival around us. That's all right, I hear Granny say. Daddy flashes a thumbs up. I grin up at the moon. It glows back at me. We're a mighty family, Daddy booms. Mighty, we roar back. Then we try to make the night stretch on forever. As grown-ups slap cards and checkers against tables, we cousins dig through old trunks and laugh until our hearts explode with joy. Too soon our goodbye morning comes. We hug all the way to the door. Then we climb into our car and watch Granny and her house shrink and disappear. When we go down home with Daddy, everything we see holds a piece of him and us. We head up the highway thinking about family and dreaming about next year. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the story, and I'd love to know what you think. Family reunions are a very big tradition, in particular down south where this particular story is taking place, but also throughout the whole country. And Thanksgiving tends to be a time when families get together or have a reunion. So I'd love to know some of your family traditions. Maybe you've had a reunion you'd like to tell me about. All right, everyone, have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the story.